Hey everybody, welcome to my video on repeated games and the Grim Trigger strategy. I am going to discuss what happens when two firms who would normally compete via Corno in a one stage game start interacting repeatedly. And we're going to find that when they do, it's possible to have collusion as a Nash equilibrium strategy. So let's lay out some preliminaries. We've got pi i is profit in time i. So if i equals 1, that's what happens today. i equals 2 is what happens tomorrow, and so on. And then we've got to ask the question, is a dollar next week just as good as a dollar today? And usually the answer is no. Uh, we tend to discount the future. And so we're going to have a discount factor that we will just call delta. Uh, this discount suggests that we value future dollars less than present dollars. So, let's get to it. Uh, to lay out this notation a little bit more carefully, in time period one, profits pi one. There's no discount on the present, and so the present value of present profit is just pi one. Time period two, profit is pi two. It's discounted by delta, which is some number between zero and one, by the way. And so the present value of the profit is delta pi two. Pi 3 in period 3, delta squared in period 2, sorry, delta squared in period 3, so you get delta squared pi 3, and then so on for the 4s. Uh, you'll notice we're doing a geometric discount, where it's always just times another delta, and so our delta in, that, in those rows is delta to the i minus 1 times pi i. So there's that. Now, in a game with n time periods, lifetime profit is pi 1, today's payoff, plus discounted tomorrow's payoff, plus discounted the next day's payoff, plus discounted the next day's payoff, and so on, which is sum from i equals 1 to the n, times delta to the i minus 1, times pi i. That will add all of the present valued profits for the entire game. So that's a big deal to us. So let's get a little scenario here. There's two firms, and they're competing in quantity or Corno competition. And if it was a one-stage game, the only Nash equilibrium is Corno. And I've got other videos on how to solve for how they behave in that situation. Collusion is not an equilibrium in the one-stage game. But if our game can go on and on, if we can treat it as infinitely repeated, which either means it's infinite or more likely it just means we don't know when it ends, so we have to act like it just keeps going and going, then collusion's possible. We can actually get Nash equilibrium strategies where we leave Corno behind and choose to collude. So this is important because it starts to show us a bit of what we see in real life when firms begin to exhibit cartel behavior. So here it is, the Grim Trigger strategy. And the strategy is this. You start by colluding in period one. If the other player colludes, collude again next time. If they betray you, then you're going to play Corno until the end of time. So start by colluding. If they collude, respond with more colluding. And if not, compete forevermore. That grim trigger strategy can be a Nash equilibrium. So we need more notation. Let's get to it. Lifetime profit for firm A. Pi A is equal to the sum I equals 1 to infinity times that. Discounted profits in each period. Lifetime profit for firm B is basically the same thing, but with a B on it. Okay. So if we look at their collusive profit, we're going to call we're going to compare collusive profits versus the profits when A betrays B versus the profit when B betrays A versus Corno profit. Collusive profit, we'll put an M superscript on it to suggest they're splitting monopoly profits. And then the A and B subscript to say which firm they are. If A betrays B, a cheats and gets cheating profit, and B is a loser and gets loser profit. 
B betrays A, A is the loser, B is the cheater. And if they both, and then in Corno Profit, we'll just put a C on it for Corno. Quick side note, if they were competing in prices instead, you would just plug in Bertrand here. Um, but whatever. So the profit, if you cheat, is always going to be greater than Monopoly Profit. Sorry, than Collusive Profit, which is always going to be greater than Competition Profit, which is always going to be greater than the Getting Betrayed Profit. So, Betray the other player has the highest, even more than Collusion. Collusion has more than Competing via Corneau, and Corneau has more than Being Betrayed. So, that order is also important to us. Because the fact that cheating pays more than colluding, at least for one period, gives us some temptation to want to break away from any collusive behavior. So, if they, play, if they both do their grim trigger strategy, they'll both collude repeatedly. They both start by colluding, and they answer with more colluding. Profit for firm A is equal to... Collusive profit plus discounted collusive profit plus double discounted collusive profit plus dot 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 is the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of discounted collusive profits. Now here, I'm going to break the profit out of the sum. Since that profit is the same every time with just collusive profit, pi am, uh, I can pull it out of the summation and what's left is actually part of a little calculus trick. It's a geometric series. And so we, I'm just gonna tell you this and ask you to take my word for it. If not, go read a calculus textbook. But that summation adds to one over one minus delta. So this is collusive profits times one over one minus delta. Likewise for firm two, all the same logic applies. We'll follow it all the way through and you get Collusive profits for B times 1 over 1 minus delta. Now, let's get some other situations. What happens if A plays the grim trigger strategy and B cheats? What happens? Profit for firm A. Their first period, they get the loser profit. And then after that, they get discounted Corneau, double discounted Corneau, and so on. Firm B, their first period, they get winner, they get cheating profit and then they get Corno, and then more Corno, and so on. So all of this boils out, more calculus, more geo series. By the way, with your geo series, uh, since now we have different payoffs, there's loser profit and then Corno, or cheat profit and then Corno, you're gonna start your summation at i equals two, instead of i equals one, which means in your geo series, you now have a delta over one minus delta instead of a one over one minus delta. So that is important to remember. Well, if your sum is the same profit forever from one to infinity, it's just times one minus delta, one over one minus delta. If you have one profit in period one and then a different profit from period two forevermore, it looks like this. The period one profit plus delta over one minus delta times your competition profit. All right, vice versa, if A cheats while play, or B plays grim trigger strategy, all the same ideas, only A gets the cheating profit first and B gets the loser profit first, and then they have repeated Cornell. So that kind of looks the same. So A gets cheating, plus discounted Corno stream, B gets losing, plus discounted Corno stream, great. And then last, if they both just play Corno repeatedly, then it's just gonna look like that. One over one minus delta times the Corno profits. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of math. Uh, this is all kind of just preliminaries to what we wanted to get to. Uh, so hopefully you can pause and work through it if you want to. But what's coming next? 
When is Grim Trigger Strategy an Equilibrium Strategy? Like all game theory, there's one main way you know if something's an Equilibrium Strategy. And that is when there is no incentive to deviate. Meaning, my strategy is the best thing I can be doing. So no incentive to deviate from the plan. So for both firms, you would need the profit from their Grim Trigger Strategy to be greater than the profit from cheating. You would need the profit from colluding to be greater than the profit from cheating. So what's for firm A, that means you would need to see that the discounted stream of collusive profits is greater than cheating profits plus the discounted stream of future corn oak profits. Now we see here because pi cheat is greater than pi m, there will be a temptation for us to give up future payoffs of decreasing collusive profit to Corno profit, uh, of making that switch in favor of getting a higher payoff today. And so there's your collusion, here's your cheating. That is a really important equation as we'll show in just a minute. For firm B, you get the same idea. You need for their collusion to be more profitable than cheating and then cornoing. So that hasn't changed. They look the same that way. If those are both true, if both of those equations are true, then repeated collusion is a Nash equilibrium in the repeated game. So let me repeat, repeat that. If both of those equations are true, then collusion is a Nash equilibrium. So, let's move on and talk about when that might happen. How patient does a firm need to be to ignore that short-term gains from cheating? Or a different way of phrasing it, more mathematically, what's the minimum discount factor, delta, that sustains collusion? For each firm, we want to see something like this. And so I'm interested in the discount factor that makes that true. So I'm going to do a bunch of algebra. I'm going to multiply everything times 1 minus delta on both sides. And I get that. Collusive profit equals 1 minus delta times cheating profit plus delta or no profit. Rearrange things. Rearrange things, rearrange things, and then you get this. That the delta, your discount factor, has to be greater than pi cheat minus collusive profit over pi cheat minus corno profit. I know I went pretty fast through there, but this is a video, so you can pause if you need to see all the steps. That delta. If delta is greater than that fraction, then this firm sees the Grim Trigger strategy as their best option. So that is a required situation in order for this to be an equilibrium. So let's do a little scenario uh, where two identical firms, if they cheat, they get 1200 bucks. If they get collusive, they get 900 bucks, and if they corno, they get 600 bucks. Uh, I picked very easy numbers. These are actually numbers you would have to solve for. See my other videos on corno and collusion and such for details on that. But that would mean pi cheats 1200 minus pi m is 900 over 1200 minus 600. That's 300 over 600. That's 0.5. And that has to be less than or equal to the delta. So what's that mean? It means that when we combine these payoffs, if delta is greater than 0.5, they'll play GTS, or Grim Trigger Strategy. And if not, they won't. So the more patient a firm is, the more likely it is to collude. And this gives us some sort of a threshold. If they value future dollars half as much as present dollars or more, these firms will collude. But if they had a lower discount factor, then they wouldn't. 
A uh, couple of side notes just for fun. Uh, if the cheating profit gets bigger, then your discount factor cutoff has to go up. So the bigger the short-term payoff for cheating gets, the more patient you have to be to ignore it. If collusive profits gets bigger, well, that increases the benefits of collusion. You don't have to be as patient to wait for it. And so that actually lowers the threshold cutoff. And then lastly, if Corno profits get bigger, that means that the future stream of Corno payments isn't as bad for when you cheat. And so it increases the cutoff for collusion. Um, so those are just some comparative statics. Yeah. I don't know if this video was helpful to you, but hopefully it was. If not, too bad. Good luck, you guys. Thanks for watching, and happy econing.